What's going on, guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here to talk to you about Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Big in Japan. Uh, this is a four-issue miniseries written by Zeb Wells with art by the late Seth Fisher. Uh, this came out, uh, I think, 2005 or so, uh, and Seth Fisher uh, completed this miniseries and then was celebrating the completion of this story, uh, and then he accidentally fell off the roof of a building uh, in Japan. So he died before this story uh, even uh, came out completely. He had finished working on it, but the story hadn't, uh, all the issues hadn't come out uh, when he passed away. Uh, and so right at the beginning of this book, it's dedicated to uh, Seth Fisher. And uh, I will say, this is some of the most fun that I have ever had reading a comic book. Uh, I had read this before, and I didn't remember just how bonkers, and I say that in the best way possible, just how bonkers this story is. And I love every minute of it. Uh, at one point in the back, uh, there are some interview uh, segment, not interview, uh, it's uh, emails from Seth Fisher to his editor. Uh, and he says, let me see if I can find it so that I don't don't uh, misinterpret what he said. He said something about how he wants comic books to, uh, he wants to push comics to their logical possibility. Uh, I'm not going to look for the exact wording. That's basically what he says. And uh, there are times in this where I'm thinking to myself, that's really weird and crazy, and technically it doesn't make sense, and technically I don't care. Uh, at one point, uh, we see uh, the Mole Man from the Fantastic Four. We see some of his moloids, which are these little uh, minion-esque creatures that are loyal to the Mole Man. And at one point, we see uh, like their living quarters. And part of it uh, is built with uh, giant Lego pieces. And the Mole are smaller than humans, but they're not that small. Uh, so does it make any sense that they've got Legos that are like 100 times the size of normal Legos that have built part of their room? No. Uh, is it funny? Yes. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, there's a whole lot of this that just is completely bonkers. And like I, I said that already, but I love it. Uh, there are times when something, you, if you're really wanting to be a funny daddy, you'll say that doesn't make any sense. And like I said, I just don't care. Uh, at times uh, we will see, like at one point, uh, it's getting very like Grant Morrisonian in how meta it is in breaking the fourth wall. Uh, at one point, basically the premise is the Fantastic Four are being honored uh, at a uh, celebration in Japan. And Tony Stark also just happens to be there. And then uh, these giant kaiju start attacking. And we are told that uh, the last kaiju attack was like a generation before uh, and that the uh, uh, rise of superheroes uh, basically kind of uh, put an end to regular kaiju attacks. But now there's a whole bunch of them attacking Japan uh, and then we find out these kaiju are attacking because they are scared of this like gigantic cosmic entity that is coming to Earth. Uh, and then when it gets summoned, we see these creatures that are like uh, tearing uh, through the comic page. And at one point, uh, in one panel, one of them is like tearing through the page and they tear through the thing's arm. But then in the next panel, because uh, that panel, they're not tearing through it, his arm is okay. And he's like, oh, th that's weird. I must have just imagined that. Uh, and uh, these creatures are saying like, in a few pages, this giant creature is going to come. Uh, and uh, it's really, really inventive uh, what Seth Fisher is able to do with the art. And it's very tragic that uh, he passed away when he did. Obviously, every death is tragic, but uh, he was very young. He had a very young son uh, when he died, uh, and that is really the more tragic thing, but also, to a lesser degree, obviously, it's tragic that we didn't get to see what else uh, that he would be able to do with his imagination, because looking at this, uh, and I say this in the best way possible, this story really feels more artist driven than writer driven. Uh, I uh, took, uh, I was an English major in college, so I think of stories more from how they are written and a lot of times, uh, and comic books obviously are supposed to be a uh, collaboration of words and pictures, so I shouldn't look at them as words first and then the art is just there to support the words that the writer came up with. I shouldn't think of them that way. A lot of times they are written that way, uh, but this feels like Seth Fisher was really the one uh, driving a lot of the story and Zeb Wells was just there uh, to uh, put some words on the page uh, and kind of support uh, the big ideas that Seth Fisher came up with. Uh, so I don't want to talk too much about this. I've given you the overall elevator pitch of the story, uh, but if you like big, zany, uh, almost cartoony, but not like necessarily in terms of like the style, but in terms of like just how insane everything can get sometimes, if you like that kind of stuff, I highly, highly recommend uh, that you get Fantastic Four Iron Man Big in Japan if you can find it. Uh, so those are my thoughts on this book. I hope you guys like this uh, review, and uh, if so, or if not, I will be back in the future to talk about something else. In the meantime, have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.